So our greatest challenge is education. The other challenge is, as I said, the world is full of temptation, and I want them to internet and the mobile. And the third challenge is, is in our own inner self. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Allah la yuhayyir ma da qawmin, hatta yuhayyiru ma bi anfusihim. But in our case, in the La'al Khadula, it is very sympathetic. It is as if we are prepared every time to be enslaved by the other side. Because we are never prepared to take the challenge. We are never prepared psychologically to take the challenge in order for us to be victorious, but all the time we want to be subservient and to be subdued. So what is that? That is the program of the country. The program is another way, a very effective strategy. Means that in the challenge of the baby, Kunda is a problem. Okay, let's go to the other side of the As I mentioned, in fact, I won't dive much on the topic of my own personal experience because I want the answers and the questions to come from you. You are the patient, I am the doctor, and that's the only way I can fit it. That is drastically and, and decisive. So let's come to the other side of the terrorism. You know, terrorism, what is terrorism? The whole world is covered by this so-called terrorist mentality now. Dunia is down down by the afraid terrorism. He is telling me to tell me what to tell me. He is coming for all my people. Terrorists will be born again. Terrorists will be born again. Terrorists will be attacked again. Terrorists will be so-called under the banner of Islam. The ISIS, the Boko Haram, the Ansar al-Sharia, the Ansar al-Haq. All of them claiming to be carrying the beautiful, the, the impeccable banner of Islam. The very beautiful the break of Islam the banner of Jesus. But Islam you are not Is it the Islam brought by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Well, I think nobody, anybody with his right chances would associate with Islam with the Islam brought by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But you know why? It is another very great challenge for the youth. Because all the members that you see, all the terrorists in the world now, didn't you want to make a new apartment? Because didn't you want to be a part-time ground? Didn't you want to be easily manipulated by beautiful, empty philosophies? Because they will tell you about one or the other, when they are not going to be able to get out of this world. If they like you what you have, they like the world. In the world, they like the world. And what I think of is for me, the Mahi, the Dina, you talk in Monaco. But they, that's the only place where they stop. Listen to me very carefully. Listen to me very carefully. This is a very important verse. What I think of is for me, the Mahi, the Dina, you talk in Monaco. In the Iowa, for that, that is a danger. Anybody who decides this verse, he stopped here. He will never carry the verse to the end. He will never. You know why? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the end of the verse, he says, وَلَا تَعْتَجُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْمُعْتَدِينَ وَقَاتِلُوا إِنْ أَرَادِ وَقَاتِلُوا إِنْ أَرَادِ It is an Arabic language, the language of the Quran. In Arabic, there is a verb called a verb that operates among two bodies. In Arabic, there is a verb called an fa'al. It is an act, an action and a reaction between two bodies. Waqatilu fight, not for you to go and kill. Waqatilu fight. Against who are you? Those who are fighting against you. The verse is not telling you that. Go and fight without anybody fighting against you. But instead, go and fight against anybody who is fighting against you. This verse is an authentic, infallible evidence that there is nothing called terrorism in Islam. All the fights, all the wars in Islam is a war to defend your faith 
to defend your country, to defend your belief, to defend your property, to defend your family, and to defend your mind. There is no aggressive or offensive war in Islam. So when Islam is there, taking a bomb, planting a bomb in a market, in a supermarket, in a village, in a bank, in a parliament, in a house, killing innocent people. And the Quran says, Oman Qatala Mukumila Muta Admitan to the end of the verse, Allah is angry with you. Prepare a hellfire for you, and you are going to be punished in the next war. So, what is terrorism for that matter? Well, my definition of terrorism is, for my definition, which is not a personal human definition, but is a definition derived from the Holy Quran. When they will tell you what is terrorism, terror in English means fear. It means something frightful. It's something that instills and inspires fear in your mind. But I wouldn't define it that way. Because the only way for you to free yourself from mental educational slavery is to rebel against the system. And go to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Quran, and the Sunnah of Muhammad for you to see the truth. In Arabic, the word terror is Rahaba. In Arabic, the word Rahaba is how? That is fear. It's mentioned so twelve times in the Holy Quran. But the word terror in the Holy Quran is mentioned so only five times. What does it mean? It tells you that terror is an act that actually terrorizes your eye. It terrorizes your ear. It terrorizes your tongue. It terrorizes your touch and it terrorizes your sense of smell. Any act that is harmful, that is detrimental, that is bad to your five organs, to your five senses, and it is going to render them useless or it is going to render them inoperative, is called terrorism. What they deceive us, the bombs and the killings. And the, and, and the struggles that we are watching over the TV. Well, these are just crimes, these are the terrorism. These are simple crimes, these are brutal crimes. For well, you see, they fool us and deceive us to a point. In fact, terrorism is now identified with a Muslim. Terrorism is identified with a thief. Terrorism is identified with a hijab. You know why? Because you are unable to define what is terrorism. This is why in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Sanulti fi qulub al ladhina kafaru rukubash. I will inspire, I will throw terror in the hearts and in the minds of those who are not believers in me. So what is terrorism? Terrorism, according to this definition, is somebody who is not a believer in the true God of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in the line and in the teachings brought by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that is a terrorist. Boko Haram, the ISIS, the ISIS, well these are criminal acts, these are criminal guns. These, they, they are not even qualified to be called terrorists. But terrorism is what? Anything, any idea that is going to deviate me from believing in the true God and in true religion, from behaving properly according to the teachings of Muhammad Sallallahu is called terrorism. Because what is the material destruction? This is a game that they themselves created. It is a game that they themselves taught people to do. Because this ISIS, this Boko Haram, are simply the creation of the Western power. Take this from me. This Boko Haram and this ISIS are simply the creation of this Western power to destroy the true meaning of Islam. What true terrorism is anything that is going to deviate you from following the true life of Muhammad Sallallahu as revealed to him by his Lord Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So we can just have a stop here and listen to all of the questions that will come from the audience. We try to just dive on the more and shed more light on the television.
is mentioned at many points. Among them is time conscious. We should be time conscious. If you are time conscious, according to him, you are in dangerous situation, position, and as well as you are there. So therefore, we should be time conscious in order to escape from this dangerous disease and then save from the hands of Satan. Because as he mentioned, he told us this history of our great grandfather Adam and Islam and in Islam Laren, and he was influenced by Shaitan for warning material things. Also, he mentioned the three states of time or three states of man. As from Nuh alayhi salam to Ibrahim, salatullah alayhi imam. The second is from Ibrahim to Yaqub alayhi salam. And the third state of man is from Yaqub to Isa alayhi salam. So therefore, he talked on social injustice that leads to terrorism as the topic of discussion. He went further by defining terrorism, or before that he mentioned the problems of youth. As we are all youth, he mentioned our problems. Among them are not having proper education. We receive learning, but we are not, we, we are taught, but we are not educated. As he then the opportunity to tell us that this is one of the things for where we are educated. So therefore, this is a task for the Gamsu Agami to continue in doing this every time and always forever and ever. May Allah help us in everything too. Another problem of, of you is the nomination of invisible force. This is another problem that the youth are facing here in the Gambia and all over the world. The third problem that the youth are facing is that our own inner selves. So they are going to be careful of these three problems that are facing us and we look very for to follow the teachings of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his practices in order to save from all these things. In fact, finally, he concluded his speech by defining terrorism. Terrorism, as he says, is a lot of what is being here, and uh, is something, as he said, that is still here in you. Or any acts that have your five common senses we all know the five common sense. Anything that comes there is also defined as terrorism. And then now we go into the questions and answers. If you have any questions, you can put it here. So please, you can write this little writing in order for us to be able to read them. What is the real meaning of the Arabic word Mahram? And should two Mahrams be connected through phone or any other access like internet? So what is the real meaning of Mahram in Arabic? And should two Mahrams be connected through phone or any other access like internet. Uh, okay. Thank you very much. Um, what the Maharam is arriving, when you say Maharam is from Haram. Maharam is the objective now of Haram. Haram is the bad and Maharam is the objective of the verb halal. 
is mean somebody a mahram is a forbidden person, somebody who is forbidden. So when you say a mahram, your brother is your mahram, is forbidden to marry you. A brother, a fourth degree, a second degree, third degree, is not in half. So then a group of people, they are related either to blood or to marriage. And when you say a mahram is somebody who is forbidden to you, a person whom you cannot marry as a woman or a person who cannot marry you as a man. So when somebody is your mahram, but that person is qualified to do anything with you. I mean, you can connect to him or you can connect with him. Uh, to the internet, to the phone, and even in the same house. I think the person is trying to tell me the person who is not your mahram. So if the person is not a mahram, but that person, somebody can just transpire between you and him or her. But when he or she is a mahram, then that expects so much something about it just by a man or between you. So a mahram simply means forbidden, something that is forbidden, something that really is not allowed to marry you, that is a relative, that is a brother or a sister. So there's no problem for you to come up with that to the internet or to the phone or any other means of it. Is it clear? So the word haram is forbidden. Mahram is something for somebody who is forbidden. For you to marry with her. Or for him or her to marry for man or the man to marry her. Is it clear? But I think the person was trying to tell me the person who is not a mahram. No. That's what I, I, I can feel from the question. Yeah. But for a mahram, no. Is it clear? In fact, in, in, in occasions like this, if a question is not, if, if a question, I mean, is not clear, don't feel shy, don't feel ashamed to come up and just cry yourself, because we are fine. This is a school. Because we've just been stressing that we need to educate ourselves. to have to be courageous. To be courageous to take the truth by its own, or to take the good by its own, is one of the main values of a Muslim. It's one of the most prominent characteristics of a Muslim. I mean, to be very strong in the face of truth. I mean, in this effort for him to reveal what is right and to conceal what is wrong. So, anybody who has the conscience, don't even have any doubt. Come on, say it. Thank you. As the Sheikh mentioned, now we are giving to you everyone. Let us ask questions that are related to the test. Then from there we go on to other issues that doubt us. The Sheikh is here for us to reach Allah. Yeah, yeah, actually. Now, this one. Now, this one is actually says, why people engage in terrorism? Do they get any benefit from it? How do they feel after doing such acts? Such acts? Can they be forgiven when they repent? Well, the Yaman terrorism, that's what they are. Well, I'm trying to give you the Islamic definition of terrorism. Because a Muslim is never haunted by fear. A Muslim is never downgraded by the psychological, evil psychological imagination. A Muslim is always strong in the face of challenges. So when you say terror, as I have a lot of questions here, that is what is the meaning of terrorism in Arabia. So as you answer, you will do it together. Okay. 